Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. In the first installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, we'll be taking a look at a premise that is fundamental to any kind of surfacing, whether you be doing in SolidWorks or another kind of program, and that is of continuity. And continuity refers to the quality of the connection that can be seen between different surfaces or different curves. So I'd like to start with a real world example. If you were a limo driver, what would be a smoother ride for your passengers when making a left hand turn? Sharply turning the steering wheel to the exact radius of the turn, holding it in the same position and then quickly straightening the wheel, or alternatively gradually turning the steering wheel until the desired position to negotiate the turn and gradually unwinding the steering wheel back to straight. Well, I think we all know the answer to this, and this is this example. We don't want to be jerking the steering wheel if we were that professional limo driver, and likewise, we don't want to have jerky movements with our curves and our surfaces. And what this leads to is the quality of the reflections. And you see in this black limo, there's a high quality light line kind of between the dark gray and the, the black right through the middle of the car. And the quality of this reflection is dictated by the quality of the connection of the underlying surfaces that were used to define the exterior a CAD model that makes up this Lincoln Town Car limousine. So let's take a look at a more fundamental breakdown of continuity and the three kinds of continuity that are supported out of the box in SolidWorks and a fourth kind that we can hack SolidWorks to support. That being G0 or contact continuity, G1 or tangent continuity, G2 or curvature continuity, and finally G3 also curvature continuity, but a little bit more advanced version of what we get in G2. So here there are four different uh, examples in front of us, these gray surfaces, and they're composed of two different arc extruded surfaces that are either connected to each other at a common point or have some kind of transition between them. In the G0 example, we see the two surfaces come together at a point and there is no continuity between them. So we, we refer to this as G0. They're connected, but there is no smooth connection. The most simplest form of a technically smooth connection is a G1 or tangent connection. This is what you'll get with the standard fillet tool applying a standard radius based uh, fillet. So here we have the two different uh, sec arc sections connected by that arc uh, section here. These purple transitions are referred to as curvature combs and they're showing the radius or the rate of change of the radius of the surface. So in a G1 connection where we simply have an arc based connection and we don't see any change in the rate of curvature. Uh, the one, one way of visualizing this in the real world is if you were on a roller coaster and you took a really, really quick corner where the, the car on the roller coaster instantly went from straight uh, to an arc section, that kind of feeling where you're kind of jerked around where the, where the curve instantly starts is what you would see in a G1. Also in the reflection in the G1, you can almost see exactly where the surface starts and stops. Moving on to the next level of connection, we have G2, and this is also created with the fillet tool in SolidWorks, but this was created with the curvature continuous fillet option. And here we see that the uh, transition isn't based on an arc, it's based on a spline, yep. and the radius is actually changing throughout the connection. So we start to see that the radius kind of more matches the radius of this uh, surface here, and then begins to accelerate through here, but we still don't have the a super smooth kind of connect. We can see there's a little bit of a spike here. And this is more analogous to the first limo example, where if we were to quickly turn the wheel. And finally, this G3 curvature connection was created with a manually created surface with a spline connecting these two surfaces and then also extruded. And this has the smoothest possible connection. And this is more analogous to our second example, where the limo driver slowly turns the steering wheel to negotiate the, the turn. What we're actually seeing is we're seeing a more gradual acceleration of the curvature. We don't have that little bump here. So one way of considering that if we have a G1 connection, we'll see that the curvature combs are connected. In the G0, they're not connected. G1, they are connected. But there is a hard break here in the curvature combs. In the G2, 
we don't see that there's an actual hard break, but we don't see that smooth acceleration that's present with the G3 curvature connection. Another way to visualize this is with the curvature analysis tool in SOLIDWORKS. The G0, we see that there is no transition between them, so we, we have the two blue surfaces. Uh, G1, 2, and 3, we have a new third surface, which is shown in green. In green on G1, there is a, it's all solid color because it's representing one constant radius throughout the entire transition. G2, we see that there's a bit of a gradient between blue and green, indicating that there is a acceleration or a change in the curvature or the radius throughout the transition. And finally, in G3, we see that as well. And in this screenshot, it looks uh, mostly similar. But if we jump into SOLIDWORKS, we'll see that there is very subtle differences between them that can have far-reaching real-world implications. So here in SOLIDWORKS, I've recreated the four types of connections, G0, G1, G2, and G3. And immediately when looking at G0, we see that there is no smooth connection. We have this hard edge here, that G0 type connection. And now looking at G1, we can see the fillet between the two surfaces, but when looking at it, it's almost like you can instantly see where the fillet starts and stops in the highlight of the, the fillet. And if I were to mouse over and see where the actual edges of this face start, we can see that the edges of the surface pretty much align immediately where the fillet is. So we can see that the actual transition between the three different surfaces, the arc surface, the fillet, and then the second arc surface. Moving on to the G2 connection, we can see that it looks a little bit smoother. It's a little bit harder to differentiate where the different faces come together. And if we mouse over, it's a little less obvious where exactly the transition starts and stops. And then finally on our D3 connection, we can see that it's almost imperceptible to see where the fillet starts and stops. And if I were to mouse over, the, the actual surface does not correspond visually with where it, uh, it actually looks like it starts and stops. So we have a very seamless flow between three different surfaces in the G3 example, but on the G1 example, it's very immediately obvious where the different surfaces start and stop. So let's turn on model edges here and take a look at what these surfaces look like from the side. So if we zoom in here, we can see that there is next to no difference uh, geometrically between the different transitions. They're very, very close to each other. The distances don't really, really ma or matter at all because they're so small, but visually there is a big difference between what they look like. And going back to our one view here, we can see one fundamental kind of idea when creating these kind of surfaces is that the higher quality of transition we need, whether it be G1, G2, or G3, the more room we need for the connection to look seamless. So here we can see that visually, you know, from the right view, they all pretty much look the same, but from our isometric or perspective view, we can see that the area required gets larger. One thing I found is it kind of goes up by a factor of 1.4. So this here is actually a one inch radius fillet. This is created with a curvature continuous fillet, note that 1.4. And then finally, this is created with a um, style spline that's been sketched, and it needs about a 1.8 kind of fillet size to, uh, to visually look the same. So turning off the edges and rotating the view, we can see how seamless the higher quality transitions look compared to the lower quality G1 connection. So ultimately, where am I going with all of this? Well, high quality surface models are never made from a single surface working over time. Instead, they are carefully crafted from a network of surfaces where each surface is doing the least amount of work possible. Each surface is entirely relaxed, yet fully aware of what its neighbors are doing. And the surfaces need to share G2 or G3 continuity between their neighbor, so that way they seamlessly blend into a communal whole. G1 connections we saw before that there might actually be a disruption in the quality of the surface. We need to be able to tell where one surface is created. So in Zen and the Art of SOLIDWORKS Surfacing, we'll be taking a look at some of the sketch tools and some of the surface tools that we can use to create really high quality, excellent looking surface models. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SOLIDWORKS Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SOLIDWORKS files on the Demani Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons Happy SolidWorks surfacing.